Think for yourself. Question authority. What's up, guys? Welcome back. First off, go follow me on Mixer at mixer.com slash supermetaldave64. I tested it out the other day, and I'm thinking of doing gaming streams there with commentary, of course, as we play. The quality I found after my test is far better than I expected versus Twitch and YouTube. So links will be in the description for that. However, to be clear, I'll still live stream here on YouTube for breaking news and big topics regarding Nintendo and the industry. So Mixer doesn't replace that, it's just as a gaming option that works extremely good and no joke, I was blown away by the performance on Mixer. In fact, I was getting 1080p 60 frames per second with no buffering, hardly any frame drops, and the picture quality was super clean with minimal artifacts. So it was a noticeable difference from YouTube and Twitch in my opinion. So follow me there, I got about 7 followers so far as of this recording, so I'd like to get to at least 20 or so at least to start with. So it's been a bit of time, but as promised, as we discussed in the last video, as soon as the motherboard is revealed for the Switch revision, we'd go over it. And it looks like there are some interesting things about it that we'll go over, but also along with that, some of you guys have messaged me asking me to explain a bit better on how a higher yield Tegra X1 can give better battery life since many of you have assumed that a die shrink will be the only way to do it, but that's actually totally false. And to prove it in this video, we'll go over a real life GPU example that proves that you can do much better TDP watt power consumption with the same exact GPU at a higher yield. And just like some of you that I explained this to in private messages, you are going to be amazed by what you see here, I guarantee it. Also, keep in mind that as we go over this, that consider it as food for thought as a possibility for the Tegra X1. It doesn't confirm that's what's actually going on with the revision, but from the looks of it, it seems likely in my opinion. However, you can think for yourself what you want to believe after you see what I show you. Also, we'll talk more about the enhanced switch, not the revision, mind you, but the rumored more powerful model. There's information that you guys are probably not aware of. So make sure you watch the entire video for that. So the FCC has revealed the Switch Revision motherboard, and as you can see in the comparison screens, it looks nearly identical. Just about every part, every chip is exactly the same. Even the housing of the Tegra X1, which I'm assuming of course is still the Tegra X1 since it's the exact same chip size, but we'll have to get it open and removed of course, which I know Spawnwave is going to do next week. However, there are two differences that I can see just from the top view of it. These are the two circle areas here. Now in comparison with the original Switch motherboard, that area on the left has some extra chips there, but on the new one, those appear to be removed. Also in the area in center above the USB-C port appears to have some of its chip modules moved down closer to the port itself from the top. Now, as we know, the only improvement on this Switch revision is going to be from 2.5 to 6.5 hours of battery life to 4.5 to 9 hours of battery life. So the only reason I could think of removing some of those small chip modules on the left side would be that they likely weren't as necessary as originally intended and could have been actually one source of an extra unwanted power draw of the console. Anything that operates in the background or on the side that runs and is battery powered is simply going to drain more battery, right? Also, the modules that were moved closer to the USB-C port might also serve a similar purpose. With things like SOCs, for example, it's well known that the closer you move nodes together, the faster they communicate on a motherboard or MCM, multi-chip module. Also, if the intention was to put those close to the USB-C port for the goal of decreasing the power needed to transfer data to them, then that would make sense to in turn increase battery life by removing more unnecessary power draw. Otherwise, usually a revision would get things added to it, not really remove like we see here. But the Switch is a battery powered device, so when you think about it that way, it makes sense. However, these tiny changes wouldn't necessarily increase the battery life that much, I don't think, maybe a bit, but the real increase, of course, would be from the Tegra X1 processor, how efficient it is, and how much power it requires. So this is where we get into the chip yield part again. However, this time, I'm going to show you proof of this working in a real world chip. Remember though, I'm not saying this is exactly the case here with the Switch revision, but this would explain a lot of why they wouldn't really care about announcing it, which they didn't. Remember there was no announcement by Nintendo officially, and it would be very quote unquote Nintendo of them, instead of spending possibly millions of dollars and shrinking down a Tegra X1 processor, a higher yield chip 
would essentially cost Nintendo nothing, basically. They would simply be asking NVIDIA to, you know, hey, put the high yield chips only in our Switch from here on out. We got enough stock now in place and your fabrication process has basically been perfected and we can be more picky in what we choose. And these high yield chips would greatly improve our power consumption levels at our current clock speeds, basically is what Nintendo could say. Now, here's where a lot of you questioned how this could be possible. Well, take a look at these examples as proof. Here we have the Radeon RX 480 with 36 compute units, 5.8 teraflops of power, running at 1120 megahertz, 2304 stream processors, and a key part to look at is the typical board power required 150 watts. Remember, this is what is required to run this GPU correctly. Also, this GPU, the RX 480, was released in June 2016, keep that in mind. Now, take a look at this other chip. This is the AMD embedded Radeon E9550 MXM module. This is also 36 compute units, 5.8 teraflops, clock speed is exactly the same, and in fact, it's actually the exact same chip. And on top of that, this example for the embedded version of the RX 480, which is what this is, was using eight gigabytes of GDDR5 versus the other example, which was the desktop GPU, only using four gigabytes of GDDR5. Yet here, the same chip is only requiring 95 watts or less of thermal design power on that board. That's 55 watts less TDP required for the same exact chip. The E9550 module also came out three months after the RX 480 and cost over double the price at about $800 and less were made. Now, the reason you ask for this is because of higher yielded, better binned chips. AMD had a lot of the good chips, which were the RX 480s, which they put on mass market for sale for desktop GPUs, and a smaller number came out at really a high yield quality, basically this embedded version, operating at the same power level, but requiring less TDP to get it. So there's your first hand proof that higher yield chips can in fact decrease power consumption greatly. Also as a side note, I suggest taking a look at the process called undervolting. You can see a lot of examples on YouTube about this as well, where the user will actually undervolt the power consumption of a GPU and still be able to get the same power performance in some cases. That's pretty cool, huh? So yes, for the Tegra X1, after almost five years in production, it is definitely a strong possibility that the Switch revised chip is yet another Tegra X1 processor, still at 20 nanometers, yet able to require a lot less power to get the same performance due to higher yielded, better bin chips being chosen from here on out for the current model of the Switch, replacing the old model. In turn, greatly increasing battery life, but nothing much else, which of course is fine, but in terms of cost for Nintendo, this would be the cheapest option to go for and make the most sense, seeing that they didn't even announce it at all in the first place. Also, if Nintendo was going to spend millions of dollars on a Tegra X1 refabrication process to say 16 nanometers or 12 nanometers, they'd likely announce this as a new switch with improved performance and do some kind of relaunch so that they'd make some money back on an investment like that at the launch of it. But since they didn't do that, I'm guessing that this is just a higher yielded, newer 20 nanometer Tegra X1 processor. Of course, we'll leave the possibility open that it's still a shrunken down chip, but with how Nintendo operates guys and how no announcement or advertising was done for this besides fans and websites doing it for them. I'm personally leaning towards higher yields in this case, but we'll see. This example I did here though was mainly to show you that this is in fact very possible for this to be the case in the end. Now, let's finally talk again, hopefully for the last time maybe, before we get better confirmation soon, about what Muchizuki from the Wall Street Journal is talking about with the enhanced switch. Also, he's been tweeting some pretty interesting hints as well that he's hiding something further that we're going to go over here. So going back to July 10th, you guys may not be aware since he posted in Japanese, but Muchi already talked about the switch revision before it was confirmed. He referred to the switch revision as, quote, minor updates to the current switch. And also a week later, when the revision was revealed to the public, he never mentioned it or answered direct questions to him about it. He ignored the questions. So if this was the enhanced switch that he's been talking about for the past year, it would make sense that he would be taking credit as a journalist for this revision as being what he was reporting on, right? But there is more to this also. 
recently, just a few days ago, after Nintendo announced their financial data and all the hardware sales, and that they are keeping projections at 18 million for the Switch hardware for the fiscal year 2020, Muchi instead tweeted out an article about PlayStation, and then tweeted out a reply saying, oh, by the way, if you are wondering, there's nothing from me about Nintendo's earning today, and he added a smile face to it. Remember also, his Nintendo reports about new hardware have always come with a paywall attached to it, so I wouldn't be surprised if another article is coming soon from him, since he's been reporting on hardware every step of the way for Nintendo. Now he's telling people that I'm not going to say anything about this, but smiling about it at the same time. It's kind of interesting. Also on top of that, if a new, more powerful Switch is being announced soon, he'd likely hold off from writing any further articles on Switch projected hardware sales until after a new enhanced model is officially announced by Nintendo, which would make sense if he has that knowledge, and talking about it now before anything is official would be a waste of time and potentially misleading since he'd have to discuss Switch hardware sales as having just the current model and Switch Lite only officially. Then for reference on top of all of this, if you go back to what he actually reported on, the enhanced Switch from March 2019 and June 2019, he's not talking about another version of the current Switch. He actually refers to three consoles the current Switch, and two new models. And remember, before July 10th, he called the revision the current Switch as well. So in March, he said one version will have enhanced features targeted to avid video gamers. And then in June, he said the Wall Street Journal reported in March, again highlighting that March article, that Nintendo plans to update the Switch this year with two new models. One is said to look similar, not the same, to the current model, with beefed up components, while the other is expected to be a less expensive model with a new look. People involved in the supply chain said production in Southeast Asia has started for the Switch, including the current type, which is what the revision is based on the current type, and two new models, suggesting Nintendo's getting ready to introduce them soon. And remember guys, Nintendo never announced this revision. It was announced by other people, not actually announced by Nintendo. So taking all of this into consideration, and the fact that Muchizuki is silent on talking about future hardware sales projections on any Switch hardware right now, it's looking like we got another new Switch model coming different from the current one yet to be announced. And we already know almost for a fact that another Switch is in development if we collaborate with Nikkei said that Nintendo will release a next generation device that is a full model change of the current hardware to follow, no date range was given mind you, to follow after the less expensive model. Now the revision is coming out before the Switch Lite, remember that right? So they are saying to follow the less expensive model. So. That would mean something's coming out after the Switch Lite is released, and also Muchizuki is still hinting at another Switch model. So remember, Revision is coming now, Switch Lite's coming after that, and Nikkei's even saying there's a next generation model change coming to follow the less expensive version. So there is another Switch in development, guys. And it almost sounds to me like what Microsoft and Sony did, but perhaps more like Microsoft. They had the Xbox One OG, then they released the Xbox One S, and then to follow that, they released the Xbox One X, which is about six times as powerful as the S. Same Xbox, basically, just a lot more enhanced. So I hope that puts some things into perspective, because there's a lot of different sources to draw from here. But of course, the most respected sources are Muchizuki from the Wall Street Journal and Nikkei, which do have higher level sources than anyone else. There is a new enhanced switch coming after the cheaper announced version the not too distant future. It's pretty exciting. All right, so that's all the info for today, guys. It's, again, a lot of info. I suggest maybe re-watching this if you need to review what I said, but I'm encouraging you to think about it for yourself, make your own minds up about it. I'm just presenting everything to you the best I can in the most detail possible, so there is the least amount of confusion, since what the media does is they generalize reports in quick and short articles and dismiss or even miss very important elements, you could easily be put unaware of what potentially is really going on. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching and if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button and I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.